Resuming debate, reprise de débat, the Honourable Member for Halifax. Speaker. And thanks to my colleagues for the applause. Um, I didn't actually realize I was going to speak to this bill tonight, but I, I am grateful for the opportunity. And, uh, and I'm coming in a little bit last minute, so I'm not as organized as, as I would like to be. But I'm glad that I'm here and that I'm able to speak on this bill because I've been contacted by a lot of people in Nova Scotia about this issue. Um, actually, even before I became a member of Parliament, people were talking to me about this issue because, well, the member for Saanich uh, Gulf Islands is passionate about this issue. It's something that is very much present on the West Coast. It's also present on the East Coast. And in Nova Scotia, we've seen an incredible, an incredible rise in the number of uh, cases reported when it comes to Lyme disease in Nova Scotia. Really, we've been tracking this since 2002. I, I, to the best of my understanding, that's the first reported case in Nova Scotia. And we used to know that maybe it was down in the southern part of Nova Scotia. So if you went down to the Yarmouth area, for example, uh, or live there, but if you go down, because I'm not from there, um, you know, we talked about, well, maybe there's, there's uh, ticks uh, down in that area, but they're moving north, Mr. Speaker. They are moving north. Climate change is very real. It's something that's happening right now. Our climate is changing, and it's making it more hospitable for these ticks to head north to actually throughout the entire province of Nova Scotia. So in 2002, that's an important date. That was our first reported date of Lyme disease being reported in Nova Scotia. Well, it's gone up. The numbers are really incredible and I think show how climate is changing and how, th how things are really changing on the ground for us. Because in 2011, we then went up to 57 cases of reported uh, Lyme disease. In 2012, 52 cases. But last year, in 2013, 155 cases of Lyme disease reported. And so since 2002, we have 329 cases. It is possible, there are a lot of factors at play here, and, and so it is possible that people just have a better understanding of Lyme disease. Uh, people are getting treated a lot sooner. They, they understand more about it. There's been a lot of media coverage about this back home. But also, the ticks are marching north. And I, it's hard for me to even wrap my head around the fact that Lyme disease is an issue in Nova Scotia when it didn't, it didn't used to be. Things are changing. Climate change models predict that Nova Scotia is very close to having suitable climate for tick establishment across the entire province. That includes up to the furthest north of Cape Breton. So as you can imagine, this is preoccupying people quite a bit uh, back home. And I've received a lot of letters about this from people across Nova Scotia, um, including Clark Richards, who wrote to me and said that he wanted to see this bill adopted in Parliament as soon as possible. Uh, he is a PhD student in oce oceanography at Dalhousie, and he has a bit of an insider's view about science and how this all works. But in addition to uh, wanting us to support this bill, which I was glad to write back and say that we did, he also wanted to let me know that as a scientist, he's very concerned about uh, this government's attack on science that's happening in this country. And uh, he noted that he's very sad and very angry that um, the government is so heck bent on pursuing an agenda that's so out of line. I, well, I had to make up a word that would work. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be called out of order. Um, I'm pursuing an agenda that's so out of line with what he perceives as the priorities of the majority of Canadians. So he, he wanted to address two issues, but he firmly uh, supported this bill and wanted me to know about it as his member of parliament. Sherry Lynn Hiltz also wrote to me and, uh, about a Lyme disease strategy and said that uh, this debate was important and that really the, the idea of this bill is that it would bring together Canada's health ministers, medical professionals, scientists and advocates for Canadians with Lyme disease to work towards common goals and I think that's a very laudable thing. So the goals that we have in common are increasing awareness and prevention, ensuring accurate diagnoses, tracking the spread of the disease and establishing national standards for the care and treatment of Lyme disease that reflect best practices. And 
she is really excited about the idea of having this national strategy so that our country can move forward with a comprehensive strategy to combat this devastating disease. So just two examples of uh, people from my riding who you think were here and, and people aren't necessarily paying attention to what's going on in the House of Commons. Well, they are. They are. And they're writing us letters. They're being in touch. And I will say that the Lyme Disease Advocacy Network in Nova Scotia has been fantastic. Uh, they met with me years ago when I first got elected and talked to me about what was going on with Lyme disease. And when I sat down with them, this was actually in 2010, I sat down with a group of people and said, so how do I make this a federal issue? I think the bill here is a, does a good job of saying we're going to have a, a national strategy. That's the federal issue hook. At the time, I wasn't thinking along those lines. I was thinking, how, how can we talk about Lyme disease through a federal lens? And we actually talked about Lyme disease. We had a little discussion about Lyme disease and as it relates to national parks. Because if you keep in mind in Nova Scotia, the, the south of Nova Scotia where the ticks have sort of started and they're moving northward, in their movement north, they're actually traveling right through Kejimakujik National Park. So we have a national park in Nova Scotia. And uh, some folks talked to me about the fact that there are ticks in Kejimakujik. It is just a reality. Yet there are no signs, no postings, no, no telling people what to look for. I mean, you can f fix the problem if you know what to look for and, and you do a tick check at the end of the day, right? But if you don't know, you're increasing your risk. And so I actually wrote to uh, the Minister of Environment, who I can't name because he's an MP, but it was before Jim Prentice. So this was a while ago. And uh, <laughs> so I actually wrote to the then Minister of Environment and talked about the fact that the Public Health Agency of Canada declared Lyme disease to be a reportable disease, which you've heard a few times here, and that both uh, Public Health Agency and the Canadian Institute for Health Research are monitoring the prevalence and spread of the disease through the country. I've talked about the fact that Lyme disease causes a wide variety of health problems for infected individuals, that it's carried by ticks and it's transmitted through biting and that the diagnosis is on the rise, uh, particularly in eastern Canada and in suburban areas like Bedford, Nova Scotia, or in national parks. And it is so important that Canadians actually be made aware of whether ticks, um, that whether or not ticks have been found in areas where Canadians are and, and uh, whether or not the, the infected ticks are in the area as well. So I did point out to the minister that it's come to my, it had come to my attention that Parks Canada wasn't making the public aware when ticks carrying Lyme disease have been discovered in our national parks. So when infected ticks are discovered, there are no warnings on the Parks Canada website, there are no signs displayed at park entrances or on trails, and it needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Plans should already have been put in place. You know, this letter actually says for before the beginning of the 2011 outdoor recreation season. Uh, here we are, and we're about to embark on the 2014 outdoor recreation season, and yet still this kind of a plan isn't in place. I think that this is a good example of what a strategy can accomplish, right? A strategy isn't necessarily going to, you know, you snap your fingers and all of a sudden Lyme disease isn't a problem. It's these steps that we can take, like making people aware there are infected ticks in this park, you need to do a body check at the end of the day. This is how we reduce risk. People need to understand. And so it's one piece that could be part of a big strategy. And that's what we're talking about here. We're still waiting for the federal government to act. We're still waiting for them to take action on a strategy, uh, including a strategy that would, um, uh, sorry, a strategy that would include our parks. So, how about some good news? I have one minute for good news, thank you. Um, good news is Nova Scotia is taking action because I receive updates regularly from Robert Strang, who's the Chief Medical Officer of Health for Nova Scotia. And he sends out updates. This one is actually addressed to me as the MP, just saying, hey, MP, Member of Parliament, you and your constituents need to know this. And he talks about the uh, Department of Health and Wellness. They actually have a Lyme disease response plan. And it includes an interdisciplinary committee that includes public health, veterinary medicine, because animals are involved here too, wildlife biology, and it uses evidence-based advice and guidance. 
and, and they actually look at how do we control Lyme disease. They send out these regular updates that include subjects like the tick and Lyme disease surveillance, public information that's available, information to clinicians, testing and research, and it's a good mo role model. I'm being asked to wrap up, I understand, Mr. Speaker, but there are good things happening across our country, so a fat federal strategy could wrap it up real well. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Uh